today we're uh, we're going to make backpacks out of basswood bark, and uh, this is this is a finished one, and uh, this is spring here in New Hampshire, and this is peeling season, so uh, it's the time to make this sort of thing. Uh, it's got basswood bark and a white oak rim with rawhide stitching and leather straps. So this is the finished piece. See, it uh, works rather well. <laughs> This is it. This is a, a beautiful bass for backpacks. It's a fairly regular wood for uh, the Northeast here. It's not like a real dominant species, but it's, um, it's abundant. And so I don't mind taking one a year to make backpacks out of. So oh, here's our, our beautiful log. When I'm peeling bass wood, a lot of times what I used to do is take a knife and stick it in the bark and drag it down the, the bark and all the way and then peel it off and that's fine. But underneath the bark is this uh, very slippery surface that I call it a skin, an inner skin of the tree. And if you can keep from scratching through that inner skin, a tree this size would dry pretty well without any cracks. And as a carver, that's what I hope for for wood to, um, because when it splits in half, it's like, ah, then what do you do with it? There are things, but if you have a whole nice round one, you do so much more. So <clears throat> I made this thing and it looks like I made it out of a nail, but I didn't. <laughs> I upset the end of this piece of steel, and this is tool steel, uh, like a head of a nail. So I made this little thing you'd call a shoe, and that is meant to slip underneath the bark, and up above it here is a sharp blade. So I start at one end, and I set that under the bark, and pull it right down, and that should, it might bruise that inner skin, but it won't cut it. Now it this is a tool completely of your own invention or? Yeah, like they say necessity is the mother. <laughs> and so, yeah. So let's see if it works. <laughs> this is just the perfect size log for this operation. The grain of this, whoop, this bark is gonna really determine where I go with it. But it's better that you let the bark do its own thing. Can hear it letting go of the tree already. That went pretty straight. <laughs> Ta-da! We're out, and look at it's it's falling off. I've got barking irons or spuds, but they leave marks on both the bark and the wood, though if I had to, I'd use them, but I really don't think so. This time of year, if you get it opened up like this and just go boo, it pretty much jumps out of its own skin. Ha, that was it. Hear that? Yeah. I think you could probably just about push it out. Not quite. Oh, she's loose. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> it looks like grease light. Oh, it's slippery. Oh, yeah, it's slippery. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it makes it look kind of easy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so there. Ah. <laughs> and as you can see, there's uh, no marks on the wood where I scored it. So I win.
Oh, actually, I think the line was down here anyway, but still, yeah, you get a bruise, like I say, but no scratches. That's beautiful. If I put that, and I will, away in a shady place to dry, most woods of this diameter and much smaller will uh, split and you pick any one that's dry over there. <laughs> It'll show, show them. I got cedar and hornbeam and things. Yeah, even the small stuff wants to crack, but basswood has a tendency to not. And aside from all of the, its other um, pluses, that just adds to it. <laughs> it's just wonderful stuff.